So we've been working with nodes in DaVinci Resolve since the beginning of this color correction series. But how exactly do nodes function? What types of nodes should we choose for certain adjustments? When should we choose parallel nodes over layer nodes? What's the proper order of adjustments in our node structure? What are pre-clip, post-clip and shared nodes? Let's tackle these bad boys one at a time and clear the fog about node structures. As I mentioned in a previous episode, the video signal flows between the source input and the source output, which is what you see on screen in the viewer. Everything that happens on that path is affected by whatever adjustments we have in each node as we see in this example here. As I mentioned in a previous episode, it is very important to keep each adjustment or group of adjustments in their own separate nodes. And that's because you can easily control each aspect of the color correction you are working at a time. Also make sure to label your nodes because this way you will know what each node does in the correction chain. You can disable or enable each node by clicking on the number just to see how that particular adjustment affected the whole image. This is an easy way to discover if our adjustment helps the image or not. If you want to make a new version of the grade you've just created, head over to the color and grade version, click on the add, and this will add a new grading version where you can either reset all the grades or nodes by clicking Control or Command Home, or reset all the corrections but keep the node tree intact. Then you can navigate between the two grade versions and compare them using the keyboard shortcuts Ctrl or Command B or Ctrl and Command N. Let's just create a new version, reset the node tree and just go over the most common nodes we're going to work with. The most basic building block of our node tree is the serial node, also known as a corrector node. And these are the ones where we can apply our color corrections. For instance, we can add contrast, and bring down the gain, add drama with the lift and so on. Don't forget to label it. From here we can keep adding serial nodes just as we did in the previous episodes and use them for certain corrections like for the white balance or to isolate a certain color in our image or to qualify a certain color or a color range. But it's important to note here that every adjustment that you do in one serial node will ripple down the other nodes down the chain. At this point, it's very important to be aware of how we are setting up the order of our adjustments in the chain. For instance, if we are trying to pull a qualifier on a skin tone or a certain color range, we want to make sure that our saturation is bumped all the way up so that we can have enough separation before that particular qualifier. So the qualifier and do a good job at keying. So for instance, if we disable this white balance node where we boosted the saturation for color separation and check the qualifier on our keys by clicking the highlight mode, we'll see that the qualifier has trouble finding all those colors because we disabled the white balance or the saturation node before it. So when pulling keys, it's important to feed the qualifier all the color data it can work with for a better key qualification. So at this stage, if you want to add more color adjustments or isolate certain color ranges using qualifiers, you can do that by using parallel nodes. Parallel nodes help you be organized by letting you adding two or more overlapping adjustments at this stage in the node tree. This help you be more organized instead of having these adjustments applied in serial nodes one after another. You can do that by clicking on a serial node and choose add parallel node. This structure will split the RGB channel to your parallel nodes and then rejoin them together in one at the end. Adding more parallel nodes is just a matter of clicking on your last parallel node and choosing add parallel node. So you can have how many ever adjustments you need at that particular stage. And how can we use this? So for instance, we have all the reds manipulated in this first parallel node, which started out as a serial node, but now we have everything in one stage as a secondary correction. Let's use this second parallel node to manipulate the greens, and let's use the last one down here to manipulate all the blues. So let's qualify the greens in this second parallel node. And since we are here at this stage, let me show you a trick on how to quickly qualify certain color ranges using the six vector presets that resolve 
Valve makes available. Go ahead and click on the color menu and from the presets down here you can choose green, yellow, red, magenta, blue and cyan as a preset key. So let's choose green in our case and you'll notice that our preset automatically chose the green range in our image. Let's do the same thing for the blues in this third parallel node but use another preset for the blue. And you notice how our preset picked up the blues in our image which can be further refined down in our qualifier tab. So now that we have all these qualified, we can go ahead and manipulate them from our secondary tools that we are familiar with already. So you can see how our secondary corrections are contained all in this parallel node, which does a great job at keeping everything organized and neat. Another node structure that's similar to our parallel node structure is a layer node structure. And for that, again, we have to create a new serial node and then right click and choose add layer node. Now the layer node looks exactly the same, except that the icons differ on these two nodes. So this is a parallel node and this is a layer node. The layer node structure is similar to the parallel one with the difference that now the nodes act more like individual layers, much like you have in Photoshop instead of blending together. The only difference is that the order of the nodes feeding the layer mixer is reversed, meaning that the top node will be at the bottom of the stack while the layer that's at the bottom will show at the top. So keep that in mind. Another aspect of the layer mixer is that you can add composite blending modes for the nodes like subtract, multiply, overlay and so on as you might be familiar from Photoshop layers. Layer mixer structures are great for confining certain parts of the frame using qualifiers and power windows and manipulating them independently from each other. So for instance we want to preserve all the blues, in other words the sky, we can do a qualifications or just use a preset, let's use the blue or the cyan rather, let's call it cyan. So in that case, anything we do in this layer on top will not affect whatever we qualified in this node, which is the cyan. So for instance, if we would like to warm up the image, but leave the sky alone, we can head to the offset and just push the image towards the red. So everything warmed up the kite and the clouds, but the sky color, which is cyan, which we qualified in this node. We can name this node warmth. So only you understand what's going on. For instance, if we disable this cyan node by clicking on the number, you'll see that the whole image now is affected by the adjustment we did on this first node. Let's enable this one back. So let's talk next about shared nodes. Shared nodes are exactly what they sound. Nodes on which any adjustments made are shared across multiple clips. For instance, let's just create a new serial node and let's just call it temperature. To turn a corrector node into a shared node, simply right click and select save as shared node. So all that happened now is that this icon is added to our shared node label. And in the meantime, you can see that it's locked, meaning that any adjustment we make to it won't affect the node tree because everything is locked. Let's unlock this node and do a quick temperature adjustment. To apply this shared node to the other clips, we just need to copy it by clicking Ctrl or Command C, then go to each clip separately, add a serial node at the end of our node tree and paste the shared node using the Ctrl or Command V keyboard shortcut. And let's do that for all the clips in this shoot. So at this point, if you want to adjust something like in this case, the temperature on all the clips in our shoot, we can simply click on the shared node in any of the clips and continue our adjustments from there. And you can notice how the other clips are being updated with the adjustment we just made. Next, let's take a look at clip grouping. Organizing your shoots by grouping them according to camera type, lighting setup or color palette can be a real time saver when it comes to color grading and especially shot matching. Applying global corrections per group can save a lot of time instead of doing this for each clip separately. To create a group, select the clips you want, right click and choose add into new group. Give it a name and you're done. All of a sudden you'll see that our group 
received this link icon under each clip that is a part of that group. Let's create a new group out of these clips and just call it lake. Now we have a new group apart from the previous group. Grouping has the same role as a shared node but with the added benefit that we can add global group adjustments pre or post clips in the node editor. So let me show you what I mean. Once you create a clip group, your node editor menu will give us a few extra modes to work with up here. Group pre-clip, the clip where we actually did our adjustments already, the group post clip, and the last one, the timeline. Let's take a look at this diagram to understand the group workflow we are talking about. The group preclip will let us create a global adjustment preceding the initial correction we previously did on each clip individually. Here is where you would add preliminary corrections in the workflow like for instance noise reduction or obvious white balancing correction that our group might need as a whole. Every adjustment you make in a preclip mode will ripple downstream to all the clips within the current group. The clip is where we'll do all the adjustments pertaining to each clip. These adjustments are confined to each clip individually and will not affect the other clips in the group. This is where we micromanage individual clip for small exposure changes or minor corrections. The group post clip is exactly what it sounds, a final stage of global adjustments following the pre-clip and individual clip adjustments. This is where you would add creative or final adjustments that will affect the entire group as a whole. There's also a final stage in this clip grouping workflow called timeline. This is usually where you would add the film grain or color space transforms depending on the delivery target for your media. These adjustments will affect the entire clips on your timeline, grouped or not. This might have been the longest episode we've done so far, and that's because there's a lot to talk about node structures. Having a proper understanding of Resolve's nodes functionality will help you draft the right plan of approach for your next shoot. Leave a comment if you have questions, we always love to chat. See you in the next video.